Hello, and welcome to Leadership is a Philosophy, book review number three, four. Uh, and this is going to be sort of a book and concept review of The Speed of Trust by Stephen M. R. Covey, Covey, who is the son of the author of Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. Um, one of the things, one of the reasons I wanted to discuss this book and the concept is because it's another classic case of yes and. It's correct. Everything in the book is correct. Everything in the, the vein of what he's trying to teach is correct. However, I think it's still missing the next thing. So very similar to extreme ownership and um, the dichotomy of leadership, uh, it says this is the single most important thing. Well, the problem is I think the single most important thing is more complex. I don't think in leadership that you can just pick one thing and say it's the most important. Um, so uh, one thing I want to say just to be real clear up front, I'm not going to use a lot of screenshots or talk about any of the specific things that are on his website or in the book because all of it's trademarked and it's got copyright after all of it. So I'm going to talk about the concept or the, the surrounding theory, thoughts, whatever. Um, and then if you want to go get the book, obviously go get the book um, and look at the website and all that other sort of stuff. But it's all so trademarked that I don't want to, under any circumstances, seem like I'm trying to borrow or steal somebody's idea. Um, I, I think that maybe I've shown that I'm not trying to do that now. So anyway, um, we will move on to the PowerPoint part. Only one slide this time. And uh, hopefully this will be a good discussion for everyone. Thank you very much. Alrighty, so welcome to the instructional portion or the PowerPoint portion of our book discussion for the day. So um, first thing that I want to talk about is, as I said in the intro, this is a really good example of yes and. The book is correct, right? It's important that people trust each other. The theme is correct. It's all, it's all good. Um, the fact that things work smoother and faster when everybody trusts each other are obvious. I mean, it's, everybody knows this. Um, and so what he's saying is right. Um, what I found perplexing when I was reading it is, well, he has to be writing this in answer to a need or a question. And so if he has to write a book that states this, maybe there's a whole bunch of people that don't understand that or don't realize it. Um, and so, once again, uh, as, as, uh, as he said, he talks about trust. Okay, trust is great. Trust is cool. Um, but then where things get a little sideways, in my opinion, once again, this guy's got an MBA. He's got uh, lots of speaking. He's got his own business that talks about this. This is just the perspective from the analysis that we've done going through the original Leadership as a Philosophy playlist. So the process and the system is interesting, but it suddenly becomes a checklist. So he's got 13 different trust situations or trust actions, uh, which is like share trust, keep your word, a bunch of other stuff. And so there's, there's 13 of these. And then there's four parts of his competency, and the four parts are integrity, intent, capability, and results. And so you're supposed to use those four things to achieve the 13 situations or actions, or the 13 actions help you guarantee what's going on. I don't know. It's a little, it's a little confusing. And so what I'm wondering is, you know, why does it have to be so complicated? Now. If we go back and look, this was written in 2008. There was a whole lot of management buzzwords, management stuff going on back then. There were checklists all over the place. So perhaps he's modified that since then. I haven't found any recent videos of him because I was reading his book and doing the video stuff as well. Um, and so to me, if you want to make it something that can be applied to more things, as we've talked about in all the other videos, if you want to apply it to more situations and more instances then it should be something simple. Um, and so maybe 13 is too much. Maybe four is too much. I don't know. 
Um, and then similar to other books that we've talked about, he says, you know, trust is the, what's his line? Trust is one thing, the one thing that changes everything. Okay, I get it. Yes, and. So when you talk about trust, at the core of that is integrity. And so it's it seems to me, I, I finally realized he's writing all this stuff, but he only mentions integrity slightly. It's not integrity. Integrity, keep your word. Say what you mean, mean what you say. Apply the rules to everybody. I mean, if you take integrity and plug it into all the places where he says trust, that's how you get trust. And you and you can't walk into a new organization and go, hmm, let me look at my trust chart and let me fill out this thing and I'm going to look over here and this is, my trust is a little light here. No, you go in and you keep your word. You say, here's what I'm going to do, and then you do it. You say, I'm going to do this thing, and then you have to apply that rule to everybody. So how do you know that you're doing that? How do you know that you're following all the steps to earn trust? No. Have integrity. Here's what I'm going to do. Do it. Here's the truth. Mean it. Here's the way that I'm going to punish everybody in the organization if something bad happens. Then do it. If you... Tell somebody you're going to do something at a certain time, do it, or give them a reason why not. If you say you're going to punish something, do it. If you say you're going to check, check. That's integrity. Have integrity. And, and what sort of perplexed me about the whole book or the whole idea is that he says integrity is one of these four things to use in the trust actions. No, 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 it should stop at integrity. If you, if you don't have integrity, if you're not keeping your word, you got nothing else. You can't go around and do all these other things. You have to have integrity. And you have to mean it. And you have to do it. And and then once you've got it to where people believe you and ke and you're keeping your word, how do you make sure that you're constantly doing that? Well, that's where vigilance comes in. So you got to keep an eye on yourself to make sure that you have integrity. And there's times, I don't know if I've told this story yet, I had old job that I worked at, I had these, I really only had three rules it was don't do anything to harass, you know, harass or make anybody else uncomfortable. And if you do, I'm going to drop the hammer on you. And uh, another one had something to do with resumes and a resume had to be submitted on our system or I wasn't going to accept it. And then the third one was, oh man, it was something about an employee policy or whatever. I, I can't remember right now. Anyway, and one day I had all of three of those things happen. Somebody didn't submit their resume the right way. Uh, one of my employees did something moderately inappropriate to another one or said something moderately inappropriate to another one. And then the third thing was uh, a situation where the policy was going to get violated. And my whole team, all of my leadership team was sitting around looking at me. And I was wondering what was going on. And it was really quiet. And there was like this lead thing in the air. So I said, well, let's start with this one. Bring in so-and-so. We're writing them up. Here's the policy. Here's what we said we're going to do. We're doing, we're going the full extent. Second person, I said, okay, they didn't do the thing. Find out why, because they know that that's the policy. Well, they went out and talked to that guy. And it turned out that he had been told by somebody else who forgot that, to tell me that, that, he, that they said, don't submit it that way. So he brought in a hard copy and said, I don't understand because the boss always said he wanted it, but so I'm going to have a copy because I'm trying. Okay. And then the third person, we, we dropped the hammer on them because they violated a policy. All of my leaders, all of my subordinate leaders were all happy and singing and whistling and in a good mood. And I said, what, what happened? They said, oh, we were all watching you. We were all waiting to see if you were going to keep your word or not. And then I did, and they were all happy. I mean, two of them were bad, and one of them was, it made perfect sense. The guy had been told by somebody else. And so that's integrity. I had to keep my word, and I had to mean it, and I had to say it, and I had to go to the full extent, even though it was going to stink. Like if the, if the guy that had not done his resume had just said, oh, I forgot, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have interviewed him. But the team knew that. That's integrity. And, and then everybody's mood was good because they knew the rules. 
So it's not 13 different actions and all this sort of stuff. It's keep your word. Tell the truth. Don't lie. That's it. So that's that's my, my thing. All right. So you go through and read the book. Um, the book, I, I would say the first quarter of it gets the point across really clearly and concisely. And then the last two thirds of it or three quarters of it is kind of a lot of the a lot of examples for the same story, which are great because stories give you context, right? Um, but realistically, the the weight and the importance of trust in an organization and in a company and all that sort of stuff, it's all true, right? If you have good dealings with people, then you don't have to follow up. You don't have to ask a ton of questions. You don't have to do due diligence as much. Um, you, you save time. You save money because, hey, I'm going to do this. Okay, I know they're going to do it. Nothing's going to get derailed. I mean, it's all correct. That's the point is it's all right. But then when I got done with the book and then I've watched a couple of his videos, I started thinking there's, there's, a, there's a real problem here. And this is the problem, right? So everything in this book is true. I find it mind boggling that a book like this has to be written. How, how in the world do we have people that are working for big corporations that don't engender trust? Well, that means we got a bunch of people that are liars. We have a bunch of people with no integrity. So, so what does that mean? That goes back to number chapter seven in the, in the, my hypothesis, which is we're not identifying the right people and we're certainly not teaching them the right thing. We're certainly not, we, one, we're not identifying them. Two, they're not being developed at all. Because why should a book have to be written about the importance of trust when you should just be doing that all the time anyway? It, it, mind, mind blowing, mind blowing. So why is this book and all of the training that he offers required, right? That means that the system was, we, we trained them wrong. Wherever these people went to get their MBA, or wherever they went to get their business training, or they got their business acumen documentation. We never taught them integrity. We never observed them for integrity. We never paid attention to see, is this person a liar? Are they backstabbing? Are they crawling all over other people's backs to try to get ahead? If they mess up, do they tell the truth? I, I found this, I use an example, another example, I hate talking about me. Another example of this that I found amazing and absolutely relevant is recently I was applying for a job and I was going through doing an interview and they sent out an interview packet. Hey, here's the interview packet and here's the way you should interview us. So, okay, I've done a couple, but I'll read it anyway because pretend, pretend the person you're talking to knows something you don't. Okay, so get the document out and I start reading it and it says, uh, please be sure during the interview not to talk about any mistakes that you've made in the past. And then right below that were the principles for the company. And one of them was openness and self-criticism. And I went, okay, okay, I don't understand. Because if you want somebody to be able to criticize themselves, they have to be able to admit they made mistakes. And most of the time you learn more from mistakes than anything else. But this was, the, this was a big company. And, and in their guidance to the people that they were interviewing, they said, don't talk about things that you've goofed up in the past. Well, to me, that's the best measure of a leader. That shows that you've got integrity. Hey, what's the biggest mistake that you made in your past? Oh, let me tell you, blah, 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 blah. And here's the things I did and here's what happened. Warts and all, because those things happen. But if you make people say, well, we don't want you to talk about that during the interview, but we want you to be open. Do you really? I don't know. There was a lack of integrity in their hiring process even. So the problem is this book is required and all of his training is required because we're not teaching people this in school or, or in any of their development stuff. This should be obvious. This to me is just obvious stuff. And so this is the next conclusion that I had. We hear people say all the time, Leaders are made, right? They're not born, they're made. Well, you know how I feel about that. Leadership's a creative talent. You gotta have a philosophy to, to 
here's the talent, then you've got to have a philosophy to keep that talent in check, and then you have to have your organization structured so that you can take advantage of leader types. But this is the type of people that we're making, so they're not really leaders, they're people in charge. So the type of people that we're making lie, don't tell the truth, are dishonest with their peers, dishonest with their people, dishonest with their employees, um, dishonest for, I mean, this book has sold a lot and his videos have a lot of views. So what does that mean? That means that this is going on everywhere. Shame on everybody that's involved in that process. That, it, that's an abysmal indictment. I said this before. It's an abysmal indictment of the state of leadership training. We're not identifying them and we're not developing them. And we're certainly not showing them the things that'll do that. You shouldn't have to buy a book to tell you to tell the truth and have integrity. That should be in, ingrained into your brain, right? And so if you're in charge of a bunch of people or you're a leader, you have to tell the truth all the time. Um, now, what I get is, I talked about it a little bit more. We've got the dichotomy of leadership, extreme ownership. In there, they say several times, humility is the most important thing you have to have as a leader. Yes, and. Integrity is the most important thing you have to have as a leader. Yes, and. Well, how do you know how much integrity? Well, you should tell the truth all the time. But the sometimes integrity is going up the chain of command too. Sometimes you have to say, you know what? I promised the team I was going to do this and the big bosses are going to flip if they find out that I'm doing it, so I'm just going to do it. And then if they, you know, maybe you don't tell, but if they ask, you tell the truth, right? Um, but then humility, how humble. Well, you got to have vigilance to pay attention to those things. You got to have, you know, here's a situation where my decision has to be based in, 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 in integrity. Obviously, I have to be humble and to go talk to some people. And then you have to have empathy for the situation as well. Those four things all the time are where things come in. Because if you just go around saying, I'm just going to, and, I, and I'm, I'm not saying this with any disrespect in mind. Please understand that. I'm going to build trust. If somebody comes walking into my office and says, I need, we're going to build trust together, so I want you to trust me. What's the first thing, right? Missouri, show me. So I have no idea who you are. You need to learn, you know, I need to know that you're going to keep your word. And once somebody does that, then they call you and say, hey, I need this thing. I tried, I tried every possible solution and this is the, this is the least bad solution that I have and I need your help. You know, okay, I'll help immediately. But that's because of integrity, right? You come in and we're going to do some trust building exercises. Really? I, I don't, I don't know that those are accurate because Either you have integrity or you don't. It's binary, right? Well, I told a little of the truth. Well, then, that, then that's none of it, right? And so that's, that's the thing. This book was written because of a need, and the need was everybody's lying to each other. So that's a problem with everything, right? Tell the truth or at least don't lie. Tell those for life. So... I just, I just, I just look at that and say, well, that's the thing. Leaders are made. Well, yep, this is what we're making. We're making a bunch of liars, a bunch of backstabbers, a bunch of people that hide the truth, a bunch of people that are paranoid, and trample all over people's necks to get promoted. That's what we're making. And so this book is made to fix that, and the training is made to fix that. So, you know, that's a problem. All right. So at the most basic level, you just have to have integrity all the time. And then the vigilance is what keeps you on it. And humility means that you have to, you know, especially when it comes to you as a leader. Hey, here's the rule that I made. Oh, boy. Now I have to do it, too. Hmm. Well, uh, because yeah. the second that you don't, you lose the whole team. That's integrity, right? You got to keep the rules for everybody. Now, at the same time, you make the rules for everybody and then you go and do them. Everybody immediately falls right in line. It takes time. And then you have to keep an eye on people. You got to keep an eye on. Them. Had a guy, um, I know of a story where 
group of people who were over in a foreign country. And as part of them being in foreign country, the big boss put out the rule, said no getting hammered, no getting too drunk, even though that was a culture that drank a lot. So one of the employees went and got super drunk. So the big boss fired him. Next night for the closing ceremonies for the event, big boss goes out and gets hammered and has to get carried home by a couple members of his staff. And he's out the next day like nothing happened. What do you think happened in that organization, right? What do you think happened in that organization? So the other thing to do is, you know, as far as making rules, of course, this off this is off the topic a little bit. If you're going to make a rule, make sure that you're going to follow it. If you remember up the organization, uh, one, at the very the first book book, re, book review we did, I apologize. Um, the guy talks about any time a new form or system or process is going to be implemented in the company. The CEO has to use it for a week before it gets implemented. What a great idea, right? Because then it's like, no, 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 this is dumb. Or, well, yes, but, right? Because how many times if things like that happen, there's no integrity. I need this process, blam, and they blast it out there, and then nobody's going around to check on people and make sure that it's being done, right? If you're going to put out a new rule, make sure it's being followed. Because if you put out a new rule or a new process or a new system and then don't check on it, you have no integrity. I feel like I'm lecturing. I should stop. So anyway, I apologize. This video is a little short, but but really it's a it's a it's a book about the lack of integrity. This book was written in response to a need, and then lots of people bought it, which means the need was there. And so here we are, 12 years later. Has it gotten any better? I don't know. I've seen some places where no, <laughs> it does not. Um, anyway, uh, I think that's the last bullet point. Yep, so Speed of Trust, Stephen M. Markovi. And um, this is it. I think that this publication, once again, I'm not trying to get in trouble or get sued. I think that this was the reprint date, um, but it's the one that I got. So that's the date. But it may be the date that it actually came out. So um, worth reading. Uh, like I said, the first 100 pages are really where all the meat and potatoes are. And then the rest is basically, it seems like it's a, you know, to me, it's a bunch of great examples. Um, I would kind of, I was kind of skimming some of the examples because once you get the, the principle, then it's fine. Uh, anyway, thank you very much as always for your time. And uh, I apologize this video has taken so long to get up. I was making another, trying to make another video and ended up realizing that it needs to be a chapter in the initial thing. So I have to do a bunch more work. So, you know, have integrity in your own processes, right? I didn't want to put up something that was half-baked. Anyway, thank you so much and I uh, hope you enjoy your day. Bye.